Hello, welcome to block two or part two of the Great Foundations block of the month. Um, it's a foundation piece block as indicated by the name of it and I'm going to show you today this is block two that I'm holding here. We did block one last time and that was this quilt up here is one of the versions that I've put together. So this up here is block one that we did last time and then sitting in the quilt here this is block two that we're going to work on today. So you can see how that just sits in there quite nicely and I'm just going to go through with you how to how to put that together just quickly because you got so much information that last time you won't need as much probably this time you probably know what you're doing but I'll just go through putting one of the segments together. So the pattern is available if you don't already have it on my website on gourmetquilter.com it's called Great Foundations Block of the Month. It's available to purchase and download. What you get when you purchase it is the nine blocks as they come out. They're not all there yet. Um, so, and then later on there'll be opportunities for some of the setting patterns and things as well. But just for the moment it's the blocks. And so I'm just going to show you quickly here. We've got some of the pattern pages here. I haven't got them all in front of me today. So this tells you, this shows you a diagram here of the block and some other color options. Tells you how much fabric you need. Again, just half a width of fabric, about a four inch wide strip would work quite well. You need four colors this time. And you, I've used two backgrounds in mine, but you don't have to. You can just use the one, in which case you treat both the backgrounds as one fabric. And so they're all labeled. I suggest that you cut your pieces. So we've got our four inch by 21 inch strips. I suggest that you cut them down into something like four inch squares this time. It's just a convenient size for us to use and label them. Label them, colour one, colour two, three and four, etc. Plus your backgrounds. So that when you go to collect the next piece, you're picking up the right piece each time and you're not going to get confused. So then I've suggested with all your pattern pieces, they're all here. This block works in eight segments. Last, The last block was just six um, sections of the block. This time it's eight. And they're effectively a half square triangle. So this is one of the sections. So they're all fairly similar, they've just got different colours and they're some are facing the other way. So that's a section, there's going to be eight sections. Four will look the same and the other four will look the same as the other four. So that gets us going. So then I've suggested that you roughly cut your pattern piece out so it's going to look something like this. So that you've still got some paper beyond the dotted line that's your outside cutting edge when you've finished all the piecing. So just roughly cut them, make a stack of them. Everything's labelled so that you, we're going to work on part section A first. So on section A, all the, the triangles are called A, A1, A2, A3, etc. And then it tells you what colour it is to put on there. So we'll just quickly go through one of the sections. Um, as I said, I think you've probably got the hang of it now. Uh, but just to make sure. So what I've already done, I've already actually positioned my first piece on the back of my, my pattern. Here, this is going to be background. I've used, as I said, two backgrounds. This is my AA background. Um, so that's going on there. And then I'm going to put the next piece on, which is going to be color one, it tells me here. So I'm going to lay that down. Remember, I've got the right side of the fabric away from the pattern, so it's wrong sides together. Then I'm going to lay my fabric down right sides together. And if you remember, I was positioning things using a little lamp, something like this, any or a light box, some sort of light source so that you can see through and get the shadowing so that you've got enough fabric to cover right out and also for your seam allowances and things. When we did the backgrounds on this one, I did forget to mention that quickly, that we cut the background fabrics into triangles so that they're half square triangles. And that was just to so, so that the fabric would go a little bit further. It does mean when you're positioning this very first triangle, you've got a little bit less room to move than with some of our other pieces. But the, it is big enough to cover and be large enough for you to get all of that out of it. So now I'm just going to position this piece behind and we'll go to the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch now along this join line between piece A1 and A2 so that um, we join those together right through the paper. Now remember we were going to shorten a stitch length um, down to 
about 1.8 or whatever it is that you choose. Using the shorter stitch length perforates the paper more frequently, therefore it's a bit easier to tear when we come to take the paper out. Now we're going to stitch starting out just beyond our dotted outside line, but we're going to stitch right along the line, not next to it, not near it, but right along that line, starting just a little bit beyond the whole section. And again, beyond the section at this end as well. So I don't need to trim anything off this time because I've got a nice an amount there as a seam allowance when I fold that paper back. As if you remember in block one, that's what we were doing. I'm going to bring the iron over and I'm going to flip that piece of fabric that we've just sewn on over and press. I do like to press as I go. I find that everything sits so much better if I do it that way. So let's press that seam out. And now we're going to put the next piece on. So the next piece is A3 and it's another background AA piece. Got one of those over here. So it's the same background colour on each section um, each time. So, so that's going to go somewhere there. Now I'm going to bring that light source over again. A little bit harder to see through some of the dark fabrics, but still usually possible. So I'm trying to, to cover this seam here because this piece is going to flip out and do this triangle here. So I just need to make sure that everything is going to cover there. And that looks pretty good to me. So I can turn that light off again. Oh, it's keen to stay on that light. Back to the sewing machine. And I'm going to sew along this line. Again, always starting out beyond the actual block. Stitching right on that line. Now this time I, I will need to trim that away a bit because we've got this great big piece here. As I have mentioned before, there is a little bit of wastage, but some of these pieces are big enough to use in another project or perhaps later in this one. So just tear away the paper that we had stitched so that you can fold that down right along that line that we've just sewn. So fold that out of the way. This is the bit we're going to cut off. Don't go cutting the wrong side. Lay your ruler down so that your quarter inch line on your ruler sits right over your stitching line so that you can cut a quarter of an inch away from your seam line. Trim off those bits, don't need those. And again, I'm going to bring that iron over. Oops. And press that over again. So you can see we're starting to get that corner. We've just got one more piece to go on there. And that piece tells me that it's going to be colour 4. This is my colour 4. So I'm going to pop that on. And again, back to the light source. We like the light source. Same thing. So right sides together. We're going to do it so that we're flipping that over. So we want that seam line that we're about to stitch well and truly covered with enough, like a quarter of an inch at least, seam allowance there. Is keen. It's very keen. And now back to the machine and do this last line of stitching. Starting out beyond the block. So there, as I said, there's eight of these sections all end up looking quite similar. So again, I'm going to tear that paper on that little bit of stitching that's into that area where we've just sewn, fold that back along that stitching line, and again, lay your quarter inch line right on your sewing line so that you cut quarter of an inch away from your sewing line. And trim off that piece there, bring the iron over again, And press that down. So looking a little strange at this stage, however, we're just about to bring it into a much more reasonable shape. So now we're going to cut along the dotted line around the outside edge. 
So you should be able to see all that through your ruler. Your quarter inch line should be sitting pretty much right on top of that solid line so that you're cutting along the dotted line, which gives you a quarter inch seam allowance. And we're nearly done with this whole section already. Only seven more to go. Okay, and then right on these corners you'll notice that they've got those funny little angled bits. It's not essential that you do this, however it just helps with some of the bulk of the block, particularly some of these pieces end up being quite a lot of corners together when we do this, the centre of the blocks. So that's a section we had already done, I've already done this one. So when we, they're kind of like a half square triangle, if you can see that, when you put them together, they're going to form a whole quarter section of the block. So you're going to lay those right sides together. Um, I'm not sure I need to really do this. I think you can do this bit. And you're going to just sew right along that long diagonal line. And you're going to end up then with a segment that's going to look very like this one, depending on your colours, of course. So that was those two, make one of those. And when we pop a couple of those together, we're going to have half of our block, and then we're going to draw it up into two halves like this. And remember, as you go, press your seams open, you'll find that you just get a more comfortable result with all of that. So that's going to make your whole block, which is going to look a lot like this block. And I'll just show you a couple of other colour options just to give you some ideas. If you remember last time I did the same thing, I showed you a nice um, grey option and I did say there would be some other colours coming in. So this is my grey option but with my extra couple of colours. I've got a nice jady green and a deep red in there. So that's going to be part of that series. This is just to give you some ideas of different colourways because you may not all like these delicious Japanese talks that I have used. Last time I showed you the block one with the yellow background, this time bringing in some extra colours is going to be part of that series. And last time I showed you block one was like this, and this time we've just got a little bit more bluey greeny going on. So that was some colours and ideas for you for that block. Other than that, these are our two blocks so far. Remember, if you were interested in purchasing the pattern, if you haven't yet, it's available on GourmetQuilter.com. It's called Great Foundations Block of the Month. And there'll be a video tutorial each time for each block. And the blocks, there's going to be nine blocks altogether. The blocks are measuring 10 and a half inches at the moment. They're going to be a 10 inch finished block when we've finished. And there's going to be some layout options later on as well. So thank you. That was block two.